Hi guys and welcome back to 101 with Frank Pence and we have the main man right here, Mr. Lawrence Brownlee. How are you, sir? Good, Frank. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. So um, let's jump right into this thing. So how did you get into this world of technology? Um, well, my dad bought the family a computer in, in 1984. It was an Apple IIe and mm -hmm. I was pretty much hooked from then. Hooked from then. Okay, so as a kid, um, were you always interested? I know your dad bought that to you, but um, in high school, did, was there any classes that popped out to you that you liked? Yeah, um, I took a drafting class in high school and got to use, uh, we would draw by hand and uh, with pencil and paper and also got to do some computer-aided drafting. And um, so I really enjoyed that. That kind of sparked my interest further into the computer in industry. And uh, then I was really involved in band and uh, had uh, one of my favorite teachers was Mickey Fisher. Mickey Fisher. And, uh, <laughs> so I was in the marching band. I was yeah. in all the football games out there, rain or shine. Uh -huh. Okay, so what class were you? Uh, uh, Dalton High, uh, class of 93. Class of 93, that's a stud class there. You guys. We had a pretty good yeah, one. Yeah, I know, we 90, did. like the, the all of the 90s, you guys were, did some great things here. So um, shout out to class of 93. That's right. <laughs> so um, like you said, you're, your favorite class was drafting or whatnot. Did you know going into, after graduation, did you know that that is what you wanted to do going into college? No, actually I wanted to do architecture. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it didn't take long for me to figure out that uh, I was not going to be an architect. Yeah. That, that, uh, I needed to stick with uh, what I love and what I loved was uh, uh, working with computers. So I came back to, um, to Dalton here and uh, enrolled at Dalton State and started working in the Office of Computing and Information Services as a student while I was taking classes. Oh, okay. And then when I graduated uh, with uh, a degree in computer service technology, um, I was still working there and uh, graduated on Friday and started full time on Monday. Oh man, so I'm um, talking about um, graduating with that major. So some of the kids start are interested just like how you were as a, um, as a young boy. Can you talk about some of the classes that you had to take up at Dalton State College that, may, that they may have to run into as well? Yeah, they'll take uh, lots of, uh, uh, they'll take some AC and DC classes to learn about electricity, mm -hmm. and then they'll take lots of hands-on classes, uh, probably need to take a word processing class. Uh, one thing I can't stress enough if, is if you're going to go in the computer industry, whether you're going to be typing much or not, is take a word processing class. Word learn, to, learn to use the keyboard and not, uh, not look at the keys when you're typing because it saves <laughs> so much time. Okay. You can think about how to fix the computer yeah. if that's what you're doing rather than where is the key. Okay, so I probably wouldn't be any good because here at work now I still type like this. Hey, that's okay. Hey, <laughs> you know, we come in all shapes and sizes. In all shapes and sizes. Okay, so that's a good thing. So digging a little deeper here, before you, well, while you were um, pursuing this um, great education, what was your first job? Tell the people your first job. I worked at Bojangles at as a Bo cashier <laughs> on the uh, Cleveland Highway, running the drive through on the weekends and during the week. Running the drive through So I, they didn't have you flipping chicken or on fries? Nothing well, like okay, so I did, <laughs> I, I did, I did flip my, my fair share of chicken, but, okay, I, but I liked running the drive through All right. <laughs> so um, transitioning into this business world, can you talk about um, how you transitioned from working with the school into creating your own type of business? Well, I, I worked at the school for uh, five or six years and then went and worked for uh, the law firm of Minor Bell and Neal, Minor Bell and Neal mm -hmm. here in town. And I was their IT, their in-house IT in person IT employed program. by them and worked there uh, for six years. And then after that, I worked at a local computer company uh, that, that, that provided services similar to what I provide now, and then worked for a global IT outsourcing company um, nice. to, to, and managed a team of Indians over in Hyderabad, India from here. And so I had, uh, I had about 15 years of experience prior to own, uh, starting my own company. Starting your own company. So you, oh my goodness. So before we go any further, can you talk about quickly some of the um, services that you all provide down at Pinnacle Technology and where you're located? Sure. I'm at uh, 209 West Emory Street um, near the Green Spot uh, next to A1 Lock and Security. Mm -hmm. um, we sell desktop computers, laptop computers, servers, networking equipment, uh, adapters, pretty much anything uh, anything computer related. If we don't have it, we can get it. Can get and it. then we offer services. Uh, we go on site to uh, people's homes or businesses to do on site consulting. And uh, it can be anywhere from uh, we have clients that are doctors, lawyers, 
uh, manufacturing companies, mm -hmm. um, and also uh, we'll go to people's homes. You know, okay. if your granddad needs help with his computer, yeah. <laughs> I can go to his house, or I can work on it remotely from my office yeah. using uh, remote remote support tools. So you guys can service corporations, small businesses, or individuals as well. That's correct. Oh man, that's a good thing. So um, let's talk about some of the real reasons why you're here. Let's take a look at this picture and this main lady right here in your life. Can you tell us who that is and what you guys have going on? Yeah, that's. Uh, my daughter Catherine, and she is, uh, she's been collecting pencils for uh, the country of Haiti, for the kids in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And um, we have collected over 13,000 pencils now. 13,000 pencils. It's a lot of pencils. That is a lot of pencils. <laughs> so what, um, can you talk about a little bit about Rockbridge Church and how that you guys are tied or in connection with that? How's that work? Yeah, we're members of uh, Rockbridge Community Church, and I had never been on a mission trip until last year and um, God sent me to Haiti mm -hmm. and it changed my life. And we took 2,500 pencils down there last year that Rome Street School kids had collected and we gave them out to the children in Haiti. And people here don't think about, you know, a pencil and the cost of a pencil, mm -hmm. but uh, the children in Haiti, most of them don't have a lot and a pencil is a tool just like a computer and it can change somebody's life. Yes, it can. So shout out to the teachers and staff and the students over at, um, at is it Rome Street Elementary School? You guys keep doing good things. And Westwood. And Westwood. So um, talking about this, at Hurricane Matthew it was. Um, yes. Can you talk about the kids here and what um, Hurricane Matthew, how it affected them? Yeah, the, um, I, Haiti was devastated by the earthquake back mm -hmm. in 2010, but it was, it was, uh, it was devastated by Hurricane Matthew just a month ago. Yes. And so it was really, um, there was a lot of damage. The crops have been lost. Um, people's lives have been uprooted. People's lost their homes. And um, so we won't know exactly what to expect um, until we get down there, but I know that it's going to be a lot worse than, the situation's gonna be a lot worse than it was last worse. year. Yes, and I can personally speak on that. I'm just playing next door to the country attached to them in the Dominican Republic. I mean, there's things there that we just don't think about, like hot water or running restrooms in the public facilities or tissue paper. Man, um, and like I say, that's a great thing that you're doing. So how can we actually help you help the people there? Well, I'm blessed to have been to have gone to Haiti last year, and blessed to be able to go back uh, here in a couple of weeks. And uh, I've been raising money. Um, I tell people if you want to help out the people of Haiti, right now the price of rice is thirteen dollars for a twelve and a half kilogram bag of rice. Mm -hmm. um, so something you know as small as thirteen dollars can help uh, help a person in Haiti. And we we will go down there and we will purchase this rice and we will put it in, we will literally put it in their hands. Put it in their hands, man. So how can we get in contact with you again or with Rockbridge Community Church? Can you talk about that? Yeah, you can contact me. Um, you can go to my website. It's uh, pinnacletex.com. Um, you can call me on uh, my phone number is 706-529-5751. Um, and or you can contact Rockbridge Community Church. Mm -hmm. uh, we're always looking for people to go on mission trips. And uh, just recently, we had we had someone sign up to go on a mission trip that wasn't even a member of our church, but they really wanted to go to to, uh, go. to, okay. to Haiti. Yes. So you just go in and we can talk about you. So if I want to go to Haiti, I can sit and talk with you, and I'll yeah. be on that next flight smoking over. Oh yeah, I'm I'm glad to, <laughs> I'm glad to, to talk talk about Haiti. I just asked my family that I've, I've talked about Haiti a lot, and uh -huh. uh, you know if you sign up, raise a little bit of money. Get on the plane and go. That's great. So I always wondered um, who installed this um, process of giving back? Because you don't just give back in Haiti. You are here currently active and all. Where do you think that came from? Is that just in your family or what do you think? How did you get that? I mean, it was just uh, it, it, after I started going to church, I saw about how many people were doing things and just taking a little bit of time out of their day to do something. And uh, Tony Helton, who's over the kids ministry at Rockbridge, came to me and said, hey, we need a driver for um, the City of Refuge to take kids home after the services. 
And he said, would you be interested? And I said, uh, uh, well, I'm not so sure about that, <laughs> but uh, I accepted. And so on Sundays, I take kids home uh, from Rockbridge and, and drive them back home. And it's about taking that step forward and just, yeah. and just calling it. And it started there. Okay, so um, let's contact him. Let's make sure we go and support him, support the things that the schools are doing. And like I say, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. Thank you. So guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our next guest, Coach Lamar Cofield.